Hello, Benjamin from Eclipse here. Today we are going to talk about device management. Uh, in the past, in previous blog posts and videos, we've been uh, showing off MQTT or CoAP and how you can basically make your things talk. Uh, it's quite easy, right? You take your Arduino, your Raspberry Pi, you connect it to your, your computer, you start programming using Java, Python, shell script, whatever. You run your program, if something goes wrong, you can very easily unplug your device, reboot it, it's just sitting next to you, right? Uh, what if you want to do some more serious business like a real IoT where you're going to have a fleet of tens, hundreds of devices that you need to probably manage? Uh, you want to be able to monitor the health of the device, like the battery level, the, the connectivity statistics maybe of the device, how much your cellular modem has used the uh, bandwidth, stuff like that. You want, of course, to talk to the, the low-level sensors of the device. You want to manage the firmware over the air, upgrade the firmware running on your device. So for that, you need a standard, not only at the uh, transport level, I would say, but also like in the semantics of what is a firmware, what is a battery level. So such a standard is, for example, lightweight M2M. It comes from the mobile, Open Mobile Alliance. And at Eclipse, we have an open source implementation of lightweight M2M uh, in the form of um, the two projects, Wakaama and Leshen. Wakaama is for embedded devices and Leshen is for building server in a nutshell. So in today's demo, uh, I want to showcase some of the features of lightweight M2M and showcase how you can actually use Leshen and Wakaama on very constrained, for managing very constrained devices like this guy, which is the historical um, embed prototyping platform. It's an NX NXP uh, microcontroller. It has about 100 megahertz of, of, uh, of processing um, uh, power, um, half a megabyte of flash, and 32 kilobytes of RAM. So it's very, it's actually a very constrained device, right? And on this guy, we want to be able to, uh, to port and to run Wakama to be able to control the device over the air, monitor the available memory, the, the, the current battery level, as well as maybe, and we're going to see that, how, how we can actually access the sensors and talk to the sensors in a standard way, the temperature sensor, the, the LED, which is embedded on, on, on the device. And we want also to showcase how to do firmware upgrade, which is sounds kind of a tricky thing to do, right, on such a constrained device. But thanks to Wakama on, on this guy and Leshen on the server side, we're going to see that it's actually that actually works. So now let's have a look at the demo. All right, so this is uh, the Leshen web UI. Leshen is a Java web server that um, can be used to manage Lightweight M2M clients, Lightweight M2M devices. So you can download uh, the Leshen source code or a Leshen binary and run it on your own server, or you can use our own free to use um, sandbox running at leshen.eclipse.org. So my embed device is running Wakaama. And so, thanks to the Wakama API, the device is exposing a number of uh, Lightweight M2M objects uh, to be manageable over the air. So, I'm going to start and plug my device. Hope you can see that. So, the device is booting, and as soon as it will have internet connectivity, it will um, register against the server with a specific ID, a specific endpoint name, and from that point, either from the web UI or um, by using uh, APIs, you can start and talk to your device. So uh, what does this mean? It means that the device is, as I said, exposing a number of uh, resources, as in REST resources, if you will, only they are standard resources, like if you read the Lightweight M2M specification, um, an instance of the device class will always have a specific uh, set of attributes which will allow you uh, to make sure that if you read this very specific uh, uh, resource at this specific path, it's going to be the model number. Uh, if you want to read uh, the attribute number two instead, it's going to be the serial number. You may even want to read the whole um, device object and things like that. Uh, you can actually see that my demo, uh, well, it's actually not my demo. I will put um, a link to the GitHub repo where you can find the source code. It's been developed by the Alation and Wakama uh, committers. 
you can have a look at my LCD screen here, which is showing a date uh, which doesn't seem to be up to date, right? But I can actually uh, make sure that I change that like to something more uh, in the present, like blah, 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 something in July. We update the date and not only can we keep on reading the new dates, but of course the LCD is now showing up the new date. Uh, I can use a nice uh, lightweight npm slash co-op feature, which consists in being able to observe a resource. So whenever a resource changes, in this case the date, I receive an immediate notification. That's quite convenient. Another interesting feature in Leshen is whenever you need to debug what's happening on the wire, you can of course launch Wireshark, but that might not be convenient because the server might not be running on your local machine, right? And same for the device, it's somewhere on the field. So you can have a sort of uh, lightweight um, Wireshark, if you will, right from the Lishan Web UI. And you can see all the co-op messages that are being exchanged. If I cancel these observation, uh, I will probably see um, uh, a, a specific message and if I want to read a resource I will see that request as well, the query, the get query, then the response. Um, so that's quite nice. Device, uh, the device class, the device object is a standard language and to an object. So is the, the firmware, but more about this in just a few minutes. And then there are uh, a few other interesting uh, standard objects in the Lightweight and 2 m specification, or at least uh, the Open Mobile Alliance allows you to um, register in their uh, common uh, registry your own object definitions, which is exactly what the IPSO um, Alliance did. IPSO is IP for smart objects, and there are a bunch of standard um, class descriptions for um, sensors, common sensors and actuators that you would find in IoT, like a temperature sensor. So uh, you can have as many instances of a temperature object as you'd like, a temperature class. So in my case, I have only one, which is the instance number zero, but I can easily read that instance. And you can see that at the moment we are <laughs> going through a heat wave in, in Toulouse. That's the actual temperature in my room, I guess, plus maybe the temperature of the device, which has a few degrees, but yes, it's 35 Celsius. I can even observe the temperature, maybe start playing with my finger and see if I can manage to warm up the sensor, which apparently I can. Um, stop the observation and then what if I want to control and see the light? Well, there is a light sensor, can change the color. I want uh, maybe first to turn the LED on. Oops. Uh, you can see that I've turned the LED on. And what if I want to make it yellow? Yellow would be uh, some red and some green, I guess, is it? Yes, the LED is now yellow-ish. Uh, what else? Well, of course, the accelerometer, which I can observe. So right now, the, the embed is facing the ground. But if I observe this, I can probably try and play with this. But yeah, it's actually taped to my um, table. Uh, OK, so that's quite nice. Uh, maybe I can actually also show you uh, what if I want to play with the API, although the API is not really meant to be used, uh, uh, let's say, in production, it's rather uh, what's uh, driving the web UI. You can still um, tinker with it, right? If I want to talk to my uh, LPC, which I think, sorry, it's called LPC Benjamin, uh, and for the uh, instant zero, of the object, blah, blah, blah. I want to update the value. Just turn the LED off and on again. Okay, so now for the interesting bit, turns out the embedded NXP is very easy to update. You just need to put a new binary in, in the local file system at the, at the root and reboot, and it's gonna be picked up and, and, and you will run a new firmware after that. 
So in Lightroom and Tulem, in order to do a, an update, there are two ways. Either you set, up, you set uh, the actual binary uh, bits, bytes in uh, this resource. Uh, it might not be the best choice though, uh, because you're gonna do that over co-op. Uh, so if you have a very large binary, it's gonna be uh, cumbersome. Uh, or you can just set the package you are running uh, in this uh, resource, which is what I'm gonna do. So if you uh, want, you can actually have a look at how it's implemented in the GitHub repo I mentioned earlier. Please note that this is not 100% compliant with the spec, but just for the sake of the demo, I thought it would be pretty cool to show you uh, how easy it actually is to implement the, the update and you can see that by yourself if you look at the code. So uh, this is the URI to where a embed, an embed binary uh, sits. It looks like there might be some blinking involved. We are gonna see about that. Uh, I update the URI resource and then I execute the, um, the download and the actual update. Well, the download should, should uh, have happened beforehand if we're 100% uh, compliant with the spec. Looks like Lesion is complaining about the device not responding anymore. It's basically because it's in the process of, the, of updating as this LED, this LED just showed us. And now if I go back to the home page, we can see that, well, it looks like there is a totally new device because essentially uh, the firmware of PUT is totally different. The client endpoint is even different and looks like the role of this, this firmware is just to do some RGB LED blinking here. And if I have a look at the resources exposed, well, the IPSO objects are gone and even in terms of um, model number and such, we can see that it's totally different. So that's what I had for you. Uh, please make sure to check out eclipse.org slash wakaama for more information on the embedded client called Wakaama. And uh, make sure to check out eclipse.org slash lesion and or lesion.eclipse.org if you want to play with all the fancy server side stuff I've shown, including that very nice co-op console. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, comment to let me know which videos you would like to see next, and see you next time. Bye-bye.